to Opera Synopses, Opera Synopses, Opera Synopses, Opera Synopses, with me, Avi Green, your friendly opera singer friend who wants you to love opera just as much as she does, if not more. And special guest illustrator extraordinaire, Rosie Brooks, who is in charge of all of the artwork in this video. All of her links are down below. This week, we've got an old scholar, the devil, and a woman who definitely did not get what she deserved. There are some very strong themes of pedophilia in, um, in this. Avi, that's, that's not a way to start a video. It's French, it has five acts and a ballet, which is rarely performed, and it premiered on March 19th, 1859. It is Gounod's Faust. Based on Goethe, tragedy, Faust, the same guy who wrote Werther, which is also up there. There are many, many, many adaptations to this story from literature to art, and yes, of course, obviously, operas as well. But today we are focusing on Gounod and his librettists, Barbier and Carré. It's not really an uplifting story, you could say. But then again, how many operas are actually that uplifting? But let's get right into it. Grab some tea or something else and uh, act one. One sec, I'm actually going to need some wine for this one. So we meet this old scholar named Faust who is done with life. He's ready to walk into the light. He is preparing some poison in order to put everything to an end. I've missed out on everything. Women. And women. He hears people singing in the streets about God and hope and all things good and wonderful. So he decides to call upon Satan so he can turn him into a young man so that Faust then can get a young and beautiful mistress. Said I needed wine for this one. <sighs> Mephistophele, AKA Satan arrives pretty immediately actually and is a very devilishly handsome man. See what I did there? See what I did there? He's funny stylish, very much your dream bad boy situation. You look surprised, it's me. Is it, is it the hat? Um, this man just popped into your living room out of thin air and you're questioning his abilities? Faust instantly regrets what he's done and is trying to get Miss Mephistophele to leave because he's like, this is a bad idea. I came all this way and you're kicking me out? What could you possibly do for me? Anything, everything. What do you want? Gold, glory? Power? No, no, no. I desire youth and pleasure and a mistress and I want them to want me and desire me and I want to be able to flirt successfully. I can do that for you. No big deal. What's the catch? Oh, nothing really in this world. Yeah, no, you, you got me in this world, but you're all mine in the underworld. Faust agrees after Mephistophele conjures up an image of a beautiful woman named Marguerite, we will meet her soon. To entice Faust, Mephistophele then pierces Faust's skin with a quill so he can create a blood binding contract, switches the poison to a potion, and voila! Youth be to Faust! Let's go find a mistress! End of Act 1. Act 2. Obligatory operatic drinking song with soldiers, students, and village town folk. After the party calms down, a soldier with a very solemn look on his face and a medallion in hand walks in. This is Valentine. My sister's portrait has protected me so well during the war time. Marguerite is his sister, the one that has been chosen for Faust. I now have to leave her again, but this time all on her own because our mother has died. I'll be here. I'll, I'll, I'll be here by her side. You, you don't have to. I'll be here. And so will the rest of the chorus. Valentine smiles at Sibel, a local youth who is in love with Marguerite, so obviously played by a mezzo. Thank you. I knew I could count on you. Valentine then goes on to pray to God to protect his sister from all harm. Here's a little bit of an opera rule. Sort of. You could call it an opera role. If someone's going to sing to God and ask for protection for a certain someone, most likely they won't have a happy fate. This is not gonna end well for anyone. Also, where's Marguerite in all of this? 
The real one, not the projection. Mephistopheles arrives and sings a wonderful ballad about the golden calf. And being the devil that he is, he creates a wonderful party that everyone seems to really be enjoying themselves, and especially his wonderful song. Bravo, bravo. You know when you're at a party with everyone that you know, and then someone that you don't know arrives and kind of hijacks the whole party and makes it all about them? Well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're about to find out. Once he is done with the song, he decides to piss everyone off and start palm reading. Why would you palm read at a party? Are you with some kind of sorcerer? Nah, but I can tell you that your palm will not be able to touch a flower without it wilting, so say goodbye to all those wonderful bouquets you leave for your dear friend Maggie. And you, sir, will die by the hand of an enemy, but not at battle. <laughs> Great poem reading time. That's called having the devil on your side. Wait, how do you know my sister? Valentin decides to draw his sword because obviously that's the best idea to do in any scenario. But Mephistopheles just laughs at him and within seconds, Valentin's sword shatters into many different pieces. The devil you are! Valentin creates a cross with the shattered pieces of his sword and tries to ward off Mephistopheles like the devil that he truly, truly is. Faust arrives. Where has he been this entire time? Where is she? That beautiful, lovely child you showed me in my office. Yeah, she certainly is a child and you are an old, old, old man. Mephistopheles tells him to wait patiently and she will be here very, very soon. She is a young, virtuous, lovely, kind, beautiful young woman. Sibel arrives, letting everyone know that Marguerite is almost here like the Beyonce, she truly is, but is quickly intercepted by Mephistopheles, who's making way for Faust in order to make his own moves. Lovely lady, would you like my arm to help you get to where you need to go? No, that's, that's a terrible pickup line. <sighs> I am not lovely, I am not a lady, and I do not need your arm to help me. Great, great comeback. Faust very quickly gives up on the whole thing and isn't really interested in trying anymore, but Mephistopheles isn't having it. He has only just begun. Chorus sings, end of act two. I love Marguerite's one line. Act three, big mezzo aria. Obviously the most important part of every opera. So Sibel is trying to pick flowers to, in order to give to Marguerite, but if you remember correctly, Mephistophele has cursed poor Sibel's hands and made sure that every flower that he touches instantly wilts. But, but, Sibel, being the clever lass, sorry, lad, that he is, finds some holy water, washes his hands, and is able to finally pick flowers and leave them for Marguerite. I mean, he is picking them from her own garden so she would have them anyway, but it's it's the thought that counts. Mephistophele and Faust are in the corner watching all of this happen, and Mephistophele tells Faust, don't worry, Sibel would look like a mere child next to what I have planned. He is a child. Stay here. I'll be right back. Time for an aria. Beautiful child. A love has filled me, yet I have not spoken to you yet. I don't I don't mean to harp on this child thing too much, but he does constantly remind us that she is a child. Now, he, Faust, is an old man in his like 50s and 60s. Well, old man for that time. Marguerite's like 15 or 16. Max. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Compartmentalizing. Mephistophele is back with a treasure trove of jewels because we all know a kiss on the hand might be quite continental. But diamonds are a girl's best friend. They leave the casket of jewels by Sibel's flowers and away with them. Time for another aria. Who was that handsome man that I saw in the tavern earlier? There used to be this king, Thule. She basically tells us the entire story of the opera. So much foreshadowing. I do hope my brother stays safe at war and that I get to see him again. But what's that? Ooh, it's a box. Ooh, it's full of jewelry. So many beautiful jewels. I look so pretty, don't I? Mm. Mm. So Maggie lives with this old woman named Malta, who is basically waiting for her husband to come back from war. Now, Mephistophele tries to 
distract her so that Faust and Marguerite can actually get to know each other. Madam, I have some news for you. It's not the best news, but it's news. Uh, so your husband died at war, sends his regards. He also mentioned that you should probably find someone to take his place as soon as possible, but that does not intend to marry you. So basically you find yourself a warm body. As he's speaking with her, Faust and Marguerite finally have time to talk. So duet time, first date time. After some singing and getting to know each other, the women both ask the men to leave. Wait, allow your hand to linger in mine and allow me to contemplate your face in the pale brightness. That's weird lines, man, weird lines. Maybe not now, not yet. Let's play a game. He loves me. He loves me not. I do, I do, I love you, I love you, I love you, I do. They do the dance where the tenors don't leave the stage even though the soprano constantly asks them to leave. They do love them, they do love, wanna see them, but they really need them to leave right now. Mephistophele, who has been listening, of course, tells Dr. Faust that he has so much to learn in the world of womanizing and to be more patient. It's a little bit pathetic. As they walk away, Mephistophele makes sure that Faust hears Marguerite singing in her bedroom about how much she loves Faust. Faust runs back and they embrace and then the act has to end so they can adult embrace. You know what I mean. End of act three. And now we jump forward a lot of months and we are going to need a glass of wine for this one. Act four. Surprise, surprise, Marguerite is now pregnant. It only takes once, kids. It only takes once. And Faust has completely abandoned her. Once again, no surprise at all. It should be a drinking game in an opera. His best friend right now is the devil. So what are we to expect? Marguerite has now been shunned by everyone for getting pregnant outside of wedlock because obviously, what was she thinking? And the only person who still talks to her, obviously, is Sibel. I'm going to kill him for deserting you like this. I still love him. You're so good to me, Sibel. Everyone else has abandoned me. At least the church is still open to me. Now at church, Marguerite begins to pray by a statue, which, drum roll please, in dramatic effect, of course, obviously, the statue is the devil himself, Mephistophele. I need to put the wine down. I'm gonna finish it before the end of the video. Who is also shunning her for her actions and condemning her to hell. She then passes out. Here's the thing that I don't understand. He did this to her. He picked her, he picked the man, he put them together. He did, he did all of it. All of it is all his fault. Does he have some kind of obsession specifically with Marguerite that he's obsessed with her and making her life miserable? Let me know in the comments box below what you think. Back in the town square, the soldiers are all coming home and Valentin, being one of them, is very excited to finally see his sister again. Can't wait to tell my sister all about my battle stories. Mm, so excited. Yeah, she can't wait either. She's just looking so forward to hear about your battle stories. Sibel is praying that he forgives her and is kind to her, but seeing as this is an opera, that is very highly unlikely. Please be kind to her. What are you talking about? My sister. I don't know what you're talking about. This is weird. It's weird, man. He goes into the house to find his sister, Marguerite, when at the same time, who decides to reappear and make it back into everyone's lives? Fausty Faust. Where has he been? What What was he doing? Ugh, why are we here? There's so many other fish in the sea. That's why he's not there. Got it. Made sense now. As Faust approaches the door to the house, it opens. And who comes out? What do you want? That song that we were singing, that wasn't, that wasn't for you. That's, uh, I don't really like you, so the- So which of you is responsible for this? For my misfortune? For my shame? Um, hmm. How do I put this lightly? It's not your shame. It's not your misfortune. It did not happen to you. It happened to your sister. Not everything is about you. He invites the culprit to a duel. Always a good idea. Faust draws his sword and then Valentin throws away the portrait that he has of his sister. Any guesses who's going to win this battle? The opera is called Faust. Valentin is stabbed, Faust runs away, 
And in true operatic fashion, Valentin curses everyone, specifically his sister, and dies. End of act four. We are almost there. But just before we go on to the next act, somewhere between the stabbing and the next act, Marguerite has lost the baby. We're not sure how, either murder or abortion, but, but the baby's gone. It's no longer with us. Act four. I just need a sip of wine. It's such a dark opera. It's Walpurgensnacht, which is an old pagan holiday based around uh, an English nun. No one, no one celebrates anymore. It's basically a huge celebration in the underworld. Where are we? My empire. Welcome. Why is my blood freezing? Because you're dying and the contract that you signed, which is blood binding to that man, is now coming into effect. So make sure you read the contracts before you sign them. Another drinking song with a great party attached and a very famous ballet. After all, this is a French opera. Val suddenly sees Marguerite stuck in a prison cell with a very interesting necklace of a red thin line at the bot at the nape of her neck. The next bit is a bit confusing, so bear with me. And thank you, Greg, for walking me through this. <laughs> Mephistophele takes Faust to the prison cell where Marguerite is being held. Faust tries to get Marguerite to leave and escape the prison with him and Mephistophele isn't giving him a lot of time so he's kind of like, come on man, we gotta get going. But Marguerite isn't really having it. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna go with God. I'm gonna go with my faith and I'm gonna go right and not left. And with that, she dies and goes to heaven. The end, the end. Is that the end? It is the end. I have to say, that was a bit more uplifting. Yes, she did die, but she died and went to heaven. Not so bad after all. Cheers. That's all folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video and thank you so much Rosie for collaborating with me on this one. And please let us know in the comments box below what you would like us to tackle next. All of her links are down below, so definitely go check them out. Also, huge shout out to Greg Eldridge who talked me through the plot because this was a very confusing plot at several different points. And so thank you very, very much. Anyway, I'll be back very soon with another video. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you can be notified when a new video comes out because they're coming out so differently now. So you don't want to miss anything. But yeah, stay safe, drink loads and loads and loads of tea, loads and loads of tea and liquids, any kind of liquids, all good for you, but mostly tea. And watch operas, get cozy with an opera. Go see an opera in your living room. There's so many options right now. Don't let the theaters being closed stop you from doing so. L let me know what you decide to see. Use the hashtag Diva Studies so we can all be watching together, studying those operas together. Anyway. Don't make deals with the devil. Bye-bye.